Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you again this morning. If you will turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting in verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting in verse 1. I thought we would study a little bit together regarding Thanksgiving, since Thanksgiving is coming upon us quickly and think about what it means to give thanksgiving. This will be a familiar setting for us. I'll give you a bit of background to this passage. Remember that Hannah is a wife of Elkanah, and she prayed to be able to have a child, and the Lord blessed her with a son, Samuel, whom she dedicated to the Lord. And right before this passage in chapter 2, she has weaned Samuel and taken him to stay with the priest Elah, that he might be brought up in the ways of the Lord and serving there as prophet and priest. And so... We come to this chapter of Hannah giving thanks to God. And so I thought we would read that together today and think think about together what it means to be thankful and what to be thankful about. I know that there's lots of noise in our society right now with the coronavirus and what to do and what not to do and who to be with and who not to be with. But I would just encourage you this morning that it's really not about all of that. That's tradition and that's good and that's right. There's nothing wrong with that. But regardless of what you as a family decide to do in Thanksgiving, our hearts on a daily basis ought to be about thanking God for who He is. So I want us to focus this morning on the thankfulness of who He is, regardless of what He does or does not do for us. Robbie said last Sunday in his sermon that we need to realize as sinful people That if God did not send His Son to save us from hell and condemnation, that He would still be a good God. That He would still be right. That He would still be just. And He would still be um, a God who would be worthy of our praise and worship. And I think that's worth us thinking about today as we come to this passage. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. Now, that alone is worth thinking about. My heart exalts in the Lord. Heart remembering being not just our emotion, but also our minds, our thinking about who He is, our being emotionally uh, connected to God, but also our minds being connected to God. And the word exalt means to hold in high regard, ultimate esteem. That is who God is, that He is worthy of our minds and our emotions, holding Him in the highest esteem, esteem because of who He is, right? So she says, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. Um, Horn is a symbol in the Bible of power. And so our minds, our emotions, any power that we have, 
is always connected and exalted in the God. And the next line says, my mouth speaks boldly against my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. Any power we have, any boldness that we might have doesn't come from us. It comes from God's salvation, His saving grace in making us His. And so everything just connected with who He is, not what we've done, not that we've deserved it, but in His salvation in the grace and giving of that. Verse 2, there's no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one besides you, nor is there any rock like our God. Now, surely rock we know is firm foundation in Scripture. We think oftentimes back uh, to the New Testament, right? The wise man builds his house upon the rock. And God is our firm foundation. Without that foundation, the house falls, doesn't it? So Hannah, just giving forth this worshipful prayer of thanksgiving. You are my rock. You are my foundation. There's no one like you. There's no one holy, perfect without sin, blameless, right? Everything about this prayer, everything about this pouring out of thanksgiving to God is about Him, who He is, right? His holiness, His firm foundation, right? And then she begins to pour forth this uh, comparison when he looks at people and and is a just God. When we read this next part, verses 3 through 7, there's a little part of us that goes, oh, well, that's not fair. And our whole idea of fairness and what is just and what is right is oftentimes caught up in this sinful mindset of we've earned something, we deserve something. And yet, if we really wanted justice, if we really wanted fairness, we would receive nothing except condemnation and punishment. Watch what Hannah praise here. Verse 3. Boast no more so very proudly. Do not let arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord God is a God of knowledge, and with Him actions are weighed. He knows us. He weighs our actions. The bows of the mighty are shattered. But the feeble gird on strength. And so there's this comparison of the mighty and the feeble, right? And, and, and God deciding who wins the battle. Even when our eyes might just see feebleness, mightiness, He is the one who brings about victory. Even what might look likes people who can't win. Verse 5, those who were full hire themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry cease to hunger. Those who look like they have enough and are full, they've got to go work because they're not full. Those who look like they're hungry and malnourished, oh, they, they are actually the ones who cease to hunger. Not because they've done something, but because God has given it. 
Even the barren give birth to seven, but she who has many children languish. Someone who seems to be blessed with lots of children, hmm, maybe not so much. And, and she who seems to be barren because she doesn't have children, oh, well, she, she actually gives birth to seven. Seven is a number of completion. He makes us complete. Even when on the outside, we might seem barren. Verse six, the Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to Shaul and raises up. The Lord makes poor and rich. He brings low. He also exalts. There is this constant righteous judgment that God alone can bring because He alone is a righteous judge. There is no one on this earth that can give perfect and righteous judgment. It is God alone who can judge righteously, who can bring about just and righteousness in His people. But here it is in verse 8, which will be our focal passage. Will you look with me? 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the nobles and inherit a seat of honor. Here it is. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and He set the world on them. He made the pillars of the earth. They are His. He set the world on them. The foundation of this earth, the stability of this earth is set by Him alone. He will decide when they fall. He alone will reign in a righteous and perfect and holy judgment. And ladies, we can be thankful in that and rest in that and not have to walk around in fear. Look at verse 9. He keeps the feet of his godly ones. He keeps the feet of his godly ones. If you'll remember back last week, we were talking about Elijah and how Elijah had just run in fear and come in that cave and, 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 and just in the darkness and fearfulness and just saying, it's enough, God, just take my life. And God turns him, turns his feet back to where he needs to be, to where he needs to go, and to run the race and finish the course, right? And so here's Hannah. She's just left her only son with Elijah. And she goes off to herself in prayer and just says, God, you know, you're holy. You're perfect. You've set the foundation. You've set the pillars. You look at people and you decide who's going to win, even when it looks like they can't. You are righteous. You are holy. You are perfect. And I give you thanks. So I just encourage you this Thanksgiving. Don't look at the outside of things. Don't get caught up in the craziness that seems to be going on at every turn. And don't even languish and focus on what might in your own life seem to be going a little crazy right now. Focus on Him. Give 
full thought, full thanksgiving, full outpouring, not just of your emotions, but of your mind to who he is alone. Let me just give you a list of who he is, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere, all at the same time, creator, sustainer, redeemer, merciful, gracious, protector, leader, light, life, the door. We can sit around our tables this Thanksgiving, whether it be with many or with few, and be like Hannah. God, you are the one who justly, righteously, and perfectly has set this world on the pillars and the foundation of you. And I'll trust in that. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Give him thanks.